advocacy groups have been lobbying for uh, sex workers' rights for decades now. So let's get your reaction now to the outcomes of the decriminalization of sex work in South Africa, that briefing led by the Justice Minister, Ronald Damola, just a short while ago. To react to it, let's bring in the spokesperson of the Sisonke National Sex Workers Movement, that's Yonela Singh, live to us via our video link this morning. Yonela, great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Um, I take it you were also listening to Ronald Damola just a short while ago, detailing some of the um, you know, details of the the amendment bill in and of itself. Your first take on whether or not the bill goes far enough, because what we have learned, perhaps a detail people didn't know, is that this bill only seeks to decriminalize sex work and not necessarily regulate the industry. Sorry, could you please repeat, repeat your question? I lost the last part. Not a problem. I was just trying to get your first take on whether or not you reckon this bill goes far enough. Um, not really because we want we need full decriminalization um, to address a lot of the atrocities which are faced within the sex work industry because it, um, the current criminalization is not only affecting the seller but it's affecting both the seller and the buyer and the working conditions which everyone finds themselves in yeah Part of what I was saying in that first question was that there is no regulation of the industry that's going to take place, at least as a start. And I imagine that's actually where part of the contention lies. If the industry itself doesn't have people who are regulating it, how the players get involved obviously is completely free for all. Um, precisely. Um, and currently, um, it's, it's, it, it, it almost feels like it's, it's just a little bit... Um, of easing um, the current uh, pressure on, on both the buyer and the seller. However, if the industry is in itself is not regulated and just um, laws repealed of, of such as the Sexual Offenders um, Act, some of that um, is not enough because what we are looking for is looking for a, a healthy working environment. And we want a bill that will enable us to work freely, but protected as workers. Yeah. The other concern, of course, is that in this country, we know that the law is not retrospective. In other words, if certain laws are passed today, you can't use that regulation to prosecute people for things that have happened in the past. How worried are you about how this will stifle some of the sex workers' ability to get justice because of abuses that they've suffered before this bill was actually passed? Um, that is another concern. However, currently, a lot of sex workers cannot even seek recourse mm. as, to, as to things that are happening to them currently. So, things such as rape, um, things such as um, unfair, unfair treatment, you know, assaults. Those are things that are not addressed even now with the current situation. So, I mean, at, at, at some point we cannot get everything that we would like, but we would accept some of the things that we get. Um, decriminalization is part of them that we will accept and it's it's un it's unfortunate that the world doesn't work in a way that you get what you want when you want it and um, to say that some of the law some of the sex workers will not seek will not get recourse for things that happened to them in the past is is really unfortunate and we are looking at ways now of solving situations um, of solving problems that are happening now and and the biggest problem that we have now is rape of sex workers it's the murder um in the in the industry that is currently plaguing the industry and no one is being prosecuted for that yeah speaking of those challenges um south africa is a circular state but we do know that many people who frown upon sex work often cite religious ideology to back that and you know whilst the government itself formally is a circular government something ought to be said around a response to particularly that issue because decriminalizing sex work is one thing but changing public sentiment and just how people look at sex workers is something completely different well it's unfortunate that uh, um, we live in a community of with people that are indoctrinated into believing what they believe and what they believe is, is what should go for for everyone and unfortunately that it is unfortunate that we still have people who frown upon sex work despite um, all the atrocities um, surrounding sex work. And um, it is unfortunate for them that sex work is not going to go anywhere. It has been there for decades. And um, criminalizing it in 1957 has not um, 
offered any solutions because it just carried it just carried on. However, it just happened in more dangerous um, um, surroundings, and it is becoming more dangerous for everyone because opportunists um, see that know that sex work is is criminalized, and they understand that um, if they do anything to sex work. Most of the time, nothing is going to happen to them. And that is making sex workers' li- putting sex workers' lives more in danger than anything. And because um, sex work is shoved so much at the back that people find themselves working in, in, in the most inhumane conditions is also putting the client's lives in danger because of these opportunists. And therefore, having um, dogmatized individuals who will say it's immoral, it's that Whose morality yardstick are we using? Because so much is happening in the churches, which is also immoral. Yeah, that's a conversation in and of itself. But before I let you go, um, the hopes is that if this bill is accepted, many sex workers will, for instance, start coming forward to get the kind of health assistance that they need. How confident are you, given the concerns you've raised around the bill, that that will happen? Um, we, we are very confident that will happen because um, with the, uh, more than 2,500, uh, 250,000 sex workers which we have engaged with, um, they have cited abuse at healthcare facilities as their main reason of not going, especially in, in, in small communities where everyone knows the next. They say, we don't go to the clinic because um, sister so-and-so knows that I'm a sex worker. Therefore, I face so much stigma and discrimination there. And we are having brothel owners currently who are running brothels and confiscating condoms from from sex workers. Therefore, those sex workers have no have nowhere to go to report such um uh, such behaviors. Absolutely. And with decriminalization, where sex work is actually uh, normalized, we 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 are very confident that those will be things of the past. Yona Lassingu, thanks very much indeed for giving us your reaction. Really do appreciate your time on the AM Report this morning. Yona is the spokesperson for the Sisonke National Sex Workers Movement. Once again, thanks very much indeed for your time.